Let's be honest, we have our fair share of problems here on Earth. Floods, disease, poverty, environmental destruction, war, the list goes on and on. But we've also got lots of things to look forward to. Colonizing other planets, getting paralyzed patients moving again, genetically editing diseases out of people, resurrecting extinct species, and most importantly, invisibility cloaks. This list also goes on and on, and now we're at a turning point. The next 100 years will determine whether we'll stay here on Earth or advance and make our ways to the stars. But if we make it to the stars, how far can we go? Let's talk about it in today's episode of Physics of the Future. The Kardashev scale is a method of measuring a civilization's level of technological advancement. First proposed by Soviet astronomer Nikolai Kardashev in 1964, the scale is based on the amount of energy civilization is able to harness and utilize. The scale is hypothetical, but it puts energy consumption in a cosmic perspective and helps us understand how advanced we may become as a civilization. There are three levels on this scale. Type 1 is a planetary civilization, Type 2 is an interplanetary civilization, and Type 3 is an interstellar civilization. This civilization would be slightly more advanced than those found on Earth. They would be fully capable of utilizing all available resources on their homeworld, skillfully harnessing the energy output of an entire planet, about 10 quadrillion watts. They have full control over their planet's natural forces including volcanoes, earthquakes, and even weather. Level 1 civilizations also have to be able to harness and store some of the energy from their parent star to meet the demands of a growing population. With any luck, if we don't blow ourselves into an oblivion or turn the world into an uninhabitable wasteland, we'll reach this stage in 100 to 200 years. Your grandkids might even be around to see it. The next step up, a level 2 civilization, can control the energy of their entire star. This would be about 100 septillion watts in our case. Several methods have been proposed to do this. One of the most popular is the hypothetical Dyson Sphere. This machine would encompass every inch of a star gathering most if not all of its energy and transferring it to a planet for later use. But what could this much energy mean for a species? Well, almost nothing known to science could wipe out a Type 2 civilization. Imagine for a second that humans reach level 2. If a moon-sized object entered our solar system with a direct collision course with our pale blue dot, we'd have the ability to vaporize it out of existence. Or, if we had the time, we could move our planet completely out of the way and dodge it. But let's say we didn't want to move the Earth. Are there any other options? Well, yes. We'd have the ability to move Jupiter or any other planet of our choice into the way. Pretty cool, right? Some examples of Type 2 civilizations from science fiction would be the Federation of Planets from Star Trek and most of the humanoids from Mass Effect including the Asari, Solarians, and Turians. So we've gone from having control over a planet to having control over a star with enough disposable energy to essentially make us immune to extinction. What could possibly top that? How about becoming galactic travelers with knowledge of everything having to do with energy, resulting in us becoming a master race? We have access to at least one undecillion watts, have colonized the entire galaxy extracting energy from hundreds of billions of stars, traveled across interstellar space, and populate innumerable worlds. At this point, the passing of hundreds of thousands of years has resulted in the inhabitants of this civilization looking quite different. Cybernetic organisms are now the most highly advanced beings in this society, and regular unevolved humans have become an inferior subspecies. At this stage, we would have developed colonies of robots that are capable of self-replication. Their population may increase into the millions as they spread out across the galaxy, colonizing star after star. And these robots might build Dyson spheres to encapsulate each one, creating a huge network that would carry energy back to the home planet. But stretching over the galaxy in such a manner would face several problems. One challenge we would have to overcome is light speed travel. That is, unless we develop a working warp drive or use that immaculate energy cache to master wormhole teleportation, we can only get so far. This civilization would resemble the Borg, but hopefully not as resistance as feudal like. We are the Borg. Lower your shields and surrender your ships. We will 
add your biological and technological distinctiveness to our own. Your culture will adapt to service us. Resistance is futile. The Empire, but hopefully not so Darth Vader chokehold like. Or maybe they'd be more like the Reapers from Mass Effect, but not so break your body down into bio goop like. Did anyone else notice that the civilizations at this level seem so evil and horrid? Back in 1964 when Kardashev made a scale, he thought a level 4 civilization was too advanced. Since then, however, theorists like Michio Kaku and Carl Sagan have proposed additions to the scale. These additions include types 0, 4, and 5. This civilization extracts its energy and raw materials from crude, organic-based resources such as wood, coal, and oil. Any rockets utilized by such a civilization would depend on chemical propulsion. This is where we currently lie, sitting at a 0.73. We haven't quite made it to Type 1 yet. This civilization would be an intergalactic culture spanning the width and breadth of the universe. They would travel across the cosmos, commanding the power of a billion trillion stars. The civilization would be capable of attempting projects of gargantuan, superhuman proportions like changing the structure of space-time or the deliberate slowing of entropy to achieve the ultimate immortality. Or, said civilizations may ultimately become capable of living inside the event horizon of extramassive black holes. A Type 4 civilization would need to tap into energy sources unknown to us using strange or currently unknown laws of physics. For humanity, such accomplishments might never be possible. This level might be achievable only by incorporeal beings such as Star Trek's Q Continuum or Gallifreyans from Doctor Who. This civilization will have transcended their universe of origin. It would be capable of universe-scale manipulation, jumping between universes that contain varied forms of matter and laws of physics. A civilization like this would be home to beings of unimaginable power and ability. It's a little disheartening to know that we haven't even reached Type 1 yet. It would be a little nice to say something like, given our early position, there's nowhere to go but up, but this is simply not the case. It is entirely possible that some major catastrophe will send us spiraling back to the Stone Age. So what's the ultimate takeaway from all of this? If we want to advance beyond a type 0.73 civilization, we're going to need to play nice with one another, and maybe invest in science and education. That helps too. Thanks for watching, all of my sources will be in the description. Be sure to like the video if you liked it, and to subscribe to be the first to see all of my uploads as soon as they come out. Sayonara!